Hello everyone, this is Dr. Chen Zhong Chen. Welcome to the video analysis of cleft lip and palate care. In this video, we look specifically at the timing of cleft lip and palate surgery. Cleft lip and palate is a general term, which can be divided into cleft lip, cleft palate, and cleft lip and palate according to the extent of the opening. During the embryological development of the face, the upper jaw is gradually fused to the middle by the three tissues of the forehead and the cheeks. If the fusing process does not happen properly, it may result in defects with a different range of size and form. It is the most common congenital craniofacial anomaly with an incidence of 1 in 600 to 1 in 700. The cause of cleft lip and palate is unknown, but several factors contribute to the increased risk, such as genetics, environment, and certain medications. According to the location of the defect, cleft lip and palate can be classified into five types. All cleft lip and palate can be unilateral or bilateral at the same time, and the forms on both sides may be asymmetrical. Type 1, cleft lip affecting only the lip. Type 2, in addition to the cleft lip, it is also combined with the alveolus. If there is an opening that extends up to the bottom of the nose, it is the so-called complete cleft lip. Type 3. If the opening extends from the upper lip to the alveolus and upper jaw, it is type 3 cleft lip and palate. Type 4. Clefts in the upper jaw only, the affected area may be only the soft palate or both the soft palate and the hard palate. Type 5. Submucous cleft palate might not easily be found at birth because it has only uvula bifurcations, mainly defects in the velopharyngeal valve. Most of them were found because of hypernasality, nasal emission after children are old enough to speak, or accidental finding of uvula bifurcation. The necessity of repair surgery for children with submucous cleft palates depends on the results of constant speech assessment and follow-ups. Due to the different defects of the lips, nose, alveolus, hard palate, and soft palate, the problems are different, and the treatments will also be different. Depending on the different medical insurance systems and the difficulty of returning to the clinic, the treatment process for cleft lip and palate is not the same throughout the world. Generally, depending on the local medical environment, children with cleft lip and palate may undergo several surgeries. Lip repair surgery is generally performed when the children are between 3 to 6 months of age and palate repair surgery is performed at 9 to 15 months, and the time of surgery depends on children's individual circumstances. As for the velopharyngeal insufficiency surgery, VPI surgery, alveolar bone graft, and orthognathic surgery, etc., it will depend on children's developmental status and follow-up assessments. Some parents may ask, why not have the repair surgery done sooner since cleft palate affects eating and speaking? The timing of palate repair surgery needs to be considered with the risk of anesthesia and the impact of postoperative scars on the children's developmental status. Although a cleft palate may affect children's speech, the sooner the surgery is performed, the bigger impact it may cause to the middle face development due to the scar tissue formation in the surgical area. Therefore, performing palate repair surgery between 9 and 15 months of age is to reduce the impact on the development of the middle face and take into account the safety of the surgery and perform surgery in time before children learn to speak. Additionally, parents may also be concerned about whether all children with cleft palate need two palate repair surgeries. After the initial palate repair surgery, if the muscular valve of the velopharyngeal mechanism is not ideal, children may have the velopharyngeal insufficiency, which means the air will leak out the nose when speaking resulting in abnormal speech. Surgical correction for velopharyngeal insufficiency is mainly to adjust the velopharyngeal valve to a better position to improve the function of the soft palate and the problem of speech. The diagnosis of velopharyngeal insufficiency requires a nasal pharyngoscopy examination and the speech assessment of the soft palate functioning according to the patient's voice by speech pathologist. Generally, children need to be around 4 years old to cooperate with the nasal pharyngoscopy. The determination for velopharyngeal insufficiency surgery depends on the outcome of children's speech therapy intervention and the results of the nasal pharyngoscopy. 
Postoperative care and regular follow-up monitoring are just as important as surgical treatment. For children with cleft lip and palate, it is recommended to follow up once every six months until adulthood. In the long-term monitoring, some potential problems can be found in time and good treatment can be obtained. Cleft lip and palate are the congenital abnormalities that are treatable by surgery. As long as they receive appropriate treatment at the appropriate age, babies with cleft lip and palate can grow up happily.